Hey folks, this is Dan Bell with Indigent. Today I'm going to do a really quick uh, tips and tricks video on notifications in Planner. Um, the reason you may notice I'm calling Project for the Web Planner is because if you have not heard, uh, Project for the Web is going to undergo rebranding to Planner in early Q4 2024. So just trying to get ahead of that, uh, that ball game there. Uh, with regard to notifications, you know, th these have been out a while. I was doing some testing with them recently and discovered something interesting about them as well, which I think you might find interesting. So first of all, uh, with regard to you know notifications, turning them on and off, you know, basically when you navigate to project.microsoft.com, you'll notice that there's the gear in the upper right. And all you have to do is click on that gear and you'll notice one of the options there is notifications. When you click on that, you'll see that you have two types. One is to get a notification when you are assigned to a task in a project. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Uh, and then the other one is when you are added to a project or a roadmap. Uh, if you're familiar with you know, the projects within Planner, you can actually create that group and then add people to the group. The process of adding someone to the group is adding them to the project. When you do that, they get a notification. The thing that I find a little um, unfortunate is that these are on by default. And therefore, if you do roll out Project for the Web and You'll have project managers creating projects and adding people to their 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 uh, team, signing them to tasks. You know these these people are going to get notifications, and if you don't plan for that somehow, you know either alert them to the fact that hey you're going to be getting uh, you know I'm just going to say it you're going to get a lot of notifications, or hey here's how you turn notif notifications on and off. You may want to consider. Um, you know, you're going to get notifications. You may want to consider turning them off, uh, but definitely you want to uh, head this off before it becomes a problem because in reading about the notifications and reading online, I've noticed that there are many people asking for a mechanism by which these can be shut off globally because so many people are getting bombarded with notifications. Anyway, uh, I'm going to talk about the nuances between the notifications here. So anyway, you see how you can turn them on and off right by that. So that's where that's done. Uh, in in my particular testing here, the first thing I want to point out, those who are aware, you're probably aware that you can have multiple environments of your, your Project for the Web Planner environment. I have a one that's called Project for the Web 102. It's a production environment. And then I have this other one, Interesting LLC upgrade, and it's the default environment, okay? So the so important distinction because the alert that is sent to the team member behaves somewhat differently as well. For these projects uh, so it was a surprise to me uh, maybe a surprise to you as well all right so so in, in order to test the differences between these i have created two alert projects i created my alert project default basically meaning it's in the default environment and um yeah i didn't mean it for that to happen uh so uh, the default one which basically means it's in the default environment you can just see it says project here and then i have my alert project 102 which is in that other environment i just showed you a moment ago project for the web 102 environment right so we'll go ahead and test with the default environment one first. We'll click on that. Just a you know, really simple project. We'll assign one user to it. And it looks like I need to add somebody here. So I'm going to add my test user that I've been using for a lot of these tips videos. And we'll add Dan Shackelford here. Remember, adding a person to a project gets one notification. So technically, this is creating uh, a notification for Shackelford by adding the the person to the project and then this will generate a second notification by assigning Daniel Shackford to the design task of my alert project default All right so that should be two I set up a alternate profile in another Chrome environment so we can go ahead and do this testing and we can see there there's one of the notifications Dan assigned to a task uh, but I believe the reason I didn't get the first yeah there's there's the first notification okay almost caught me so here's the first notification uh, Daniel so I am also the project manager of the project Daniel Bell um, has added you to a project and here it is the Microsoft project my alert project default my alert project default uh, oh here you can open the project uh, again it says open project because it's not pertaining to a specific task just the fact that I was added to a project here's the other notification Daniel has signed you to a task, and the task is in the project, my alert project default. The task is the design project. You know, I can click on either design to go directly to the task or click on open project to go to the project. Um, either way, it's kind of similar. It's going to open up 
you know, the, the interface here. And uh, one's going to open it up and bring me into the dialog for the task that I clicked on. And I can actually go ahead and if I wanted to at this point in time, update the percent complete, right? Scroll off it, click off here, and then it's going to go ahead and update the progress on the task. Okay. Notice that shows complete here. Um, the thing that, yeah, I said it to one. Uh, and notice another thing here that does say limited access, you know, that's because this user has an E3 license. And so that user only has the ability to update tasks that are assigned to that particular user. So again, pretty straightforward, right? So clicking on the name of the task brings me into the dialog. If I were to click on the name of the project or just open the project, it's going to open the project as such, right? And then I could drill into the task by clicking on the I there, or if I wanted, I could go ahead and add the percent complete column and update it there either way. That is how it, it behaves with the default project. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other, the, the alternate instance, the 102 instance here, and we'll look at my blur project 102. Uh, in this case, I already have Dan Shackelford added to the group because I was looking at this earlier. Uh, therefore, I'm not going to get a notification for that. He's already assigned to the design task. Therefore, I'm going to do a build task, make it a four day duration here, do 4D. And we'll go ahead and assign Daniel Shackelford to that. And there we go. So that's taken care of. We'll go back out to the home page here. And then we'll go back to Daniel. And then we'll go back to Dan Shackelford's instance here. And it usually takes about 10 or 15 seconds that those notifications come in. And there it is. Daniel assigned you to a task. It's in my alert project 102. It was a build task um, on that particular project. So now it's saying you'll click on this box to open the project. Here's where things are going to behave just a bit different from default instance to custom instance. I'm going to click on open project. And uh, what you're going to see is this is being opened the project in the power apps interface which is, which is fine if that's the way you want it to do it. Um, but you know, my, my, my contention here is that your team members typically will want to deal with just simply updating their task. So why is the alert bringing me into the entire project like this? Does it really need to do it like this? So it, so it's bringing me into the power app interface. Those of you who are not familiar with the power app interface, you do have access to this with your project plan one license. Um, and it does extend the capabilities of planner significantly. Um, but I'm just pointing out the difference between the alert and how it functions. You click on open project, it opens it up in the power up interface. You would navigate to the tasks, right? The tasks tab here. And then Dan Shackelford could see the task he's assigned to there. Let's go ahead and this time I'm going to close it out. And this time I'm going to select the build task. And hopefully this will behave normally and open it up to the task tab, which it does. And then it opens up the dialogue as well. So it's a little more straightforward, kind of like it that way, because uh, it does make it a little more streamlined rather than me having to navigate to the correct tab here. And again, same process here, right? Go ahead and update the percent complete. Now the task is complete. So you can see it's crossed out there and I'm done. All right. Uh, does it have to open or can you open non default? projects, uh, non-default environment projects uh, in the in the default environment. Well, you, actually you can. Uh, that's that's the really interesting thing here. See, now I'm logged into project.microsoft.com. And again, I'm as Dan Shackelford here, as you can see. And he sees both the MyAlert 102 and the MyAlert default. If I click on MyAlert 102, notice it opens up as we would normally expect your project for the web to do right without that project power app interface so it kind of confuses me just a bit as to why those alerts would uh, go ahead and incorporate the project power app interface nonetheless it does that's the way it functions um, i'm the messenger here and uh, again this was just, just supposed to be a quick video to go ahead and explain to you how those notifications work things to be concerned with and if you have any questions comments suggestions for other videos hey don't hesitate to reach out we'd be happy to hear from you um, and create subsequent videos. Thanks so much. Have a great day.